Street Life Ministries is a Christ following nonprofit that serves homeless folks on the Mid Peninsula. We meet really interesting people. And today, we'd like to share one of those with you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I get the pleasure of hanging out with a friend of mine named David. Uh, so, David, uh, I've known David for a couple years. He's been coming to the ministry. So excited that you're sitting here with me today and getting um, an opportunity to share your your story and your journey with us. So thank you, David, for being with us. Very welcome. I, it's my my pleasure to be here, you know, to get back. That's, that's why I do what I do now, because I can. And I'm good at what, you know, like people see me quick, like going from here to there, picking up garbage. And they think people are trying to give me change. And it's like, no, I work at Costco now. I, 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 I'm good, you know, yeah. but, but it's just my way of, I'm not, I don't know too many skills, uh, but uh, what, I, what I'm good at, I can, pushing carts and picking trash, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So where, yeah. where were you born and raised? I was born in San Francisco, California. I was adopted at the age of two months old. As soon as I came out I, from a, uh, my, my birth mom in the 60s, uh, I was given to an adoption agency and the Hawkinses took me across the, to the East Bay, to, to San Lorenzo, California, and beautiful, uh, one horse town, you know, and, you know, no, no, no police, this, this sheriff, and you know, it just, it was cool. Mervyn's is right there. I mean, we had everything right there. The liquor store. We used to have the theater right there. Uh, it burned down last year, but it, it was, it was, San Lorenzo uh, theater. It, it was. They used to have these races uh, on Saturday. We get in there, and they have like red, blue, or green, and if you win, you get you get a giant pickle or a hot dog. Huh? We, we, I never won, but it was, it was always fun. Me and my cousin were there, and my brother. I had an older brother, adopted also. All three of us, me and my sister and my brother, were all adopted. That's awesome. Uh, so, I loving mom and dad? Yeah, well, yes, they were. Yes, they were. But they, I don't think they, they had the capacity when I came around. I was, I was very difficult at times. Um, I don't know, maybe because I, I was. I don't think I. I think I, a lot of it has to do with the being being with your, mo your birth mom and getting that mother's milk, if you will. Stuff that I don't know nothing about, and I think I missed out on a lot of that. Um, it's just it's just hard to explain. You know, I mean, I, I used to I'd say, "Poor me, poor me," but you know what? From what I understand, my mom, had, uh, that birth mom, had to had to, just had to give it up. She was underage, and but I just I would like to talk to her. But that's another story. But. Uh, yeah, San Lorenzo was great. Uh, both both my parents. Uh, my dad was a great. He winding guides, uh, Boy Scouts, basketball practice. At St. John's. We, they educated us. They gave me all the tools I, I needed. It just, it just I was lacking something. You know, I was always lacking something. So. So okay, so it sounds like you had a pretty pretty stable home environment. Yeah. yeah. Um, so about what age or what grade do you would you say that you started things started kind of going off course. Eighth grade, I remember me and my, me and four of my friends uh, went to Mika State Park and smoked some some, some sense of me and joints and uh, I got stoned and it went all bad from there. You know, then the next year, I remember it was eighth, eighth grade, uh, 1980, uh, Hell's Bells, uh, you know, that album uh, from uh, ACDC dropped. Uh, and I, I drank my first six pack in a, a tall, a, 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 a glass Budweiser, and I said, "Now I'm a man," you know. And it's like, "Whoa!" I, then, I, then I didn't even know, you know. My mom kept saying, "Are you sure you want to go? To, you know, are you sure you want to drink tonight?" You know. I said, "Oh yeah, yeah." And she, yeah. she, she, she. I didn't know, know, know the, the belly of the and the, that it was going. I was going to wake up to sleep. I, I'm assuming my my birth parents were addicts or something, because I believe that's hereditary. You know, it's a disease. It's like can't, I, not as bad. Not, don't get me wrong, uh, but uh, things are things are pretty were pretty wild there. You know, my my father died of colon cancer when I was 15, four days before my 16th birthday. Mm. I seen him when he took his last breath, and that. But I'd already been messing up with the law, and uh, they they tried to send me back to Utah, and I came back. I didn't want to be there. I you know it's snowing. I walk outside and it's freezing out there. It's, it's, and I told my aunt, and they tried to give me a scared straight speech, and you know me, tough days, you know, you don't know, I'll steal your car if you don't send me back, you know. So they sent me there, and I sat, sat in Oakland, scared, hey, waiting for my mom to come get me. And my dad just was a big man; he just deteriorated into nothing, uh, colon cancer, and I ate him up. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, um, so you and I share 
something in common. So I was given up for adoption at birth. No kidding. Yeah, I was born in Daly City, and um, I was given up for adoption right at birth. And so, um, so I just recently have made contact with the woman who gave birth to me. So, but we'll we'll talk about that yeah. a little bit later. But yeah, it's, it's pretty great. wild. It's pretty it's wild. Great. So I know I know a lot about what you're talking about, and I and and I'll tell you, um, a big chunk of my issues that I had growing up was I always felt different. I looked at my mom and dad. My I bl- they were my mom and dad. That's all I ever called them was mom and dad. But I didn't look like them or talk like them, and. Um, and so I always felt a little bit different. So I, so we'll talk about that yeah. um, off offline. But um, very interesting, very yes. very interesting that we have that in common. Actually, when I first got out of a, when I had one prison term under my belt, when I got out in 1997, 98, um, I, I contacted Sally, Jesse, Raphael, uh, Jenny Jones, Monto about the because having these reunion shows, and I never I got violated and I never followed back in it, sure. and not. It, so, so I want to ask you about that. So, okay, so around eighth grade, things started kind of going off track. So, I, I take it, did you did you complete high school? Uh, actually, I got my GED in, in Old Santa Rita in 1985. In Old Santa Rita? I took the five five tests, and I, I had hepatitis A from the filthy thing, cause the barracks. That was the Old Santa Rita. But uh, I said, man, I can do this time. You know, it say nothing. I, that's it was no threat to me. You know, so sure. Were you um, so you grew up in the East Bay, San Leandro area? Yes, San Leandro. Any yeah. any like gang affiliation? Not, anything like that? We we had our SLZ boys, but we'd get in fights and we you know we screw stuff up. But as far as killing people or beating people to no, I mean we've gotten I've gotten drunk and gotten beat up and you know eat, eat a bit. I, no, I, I it's, so you're it's, just a fighter. Yeah, just a fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcohol, you know, poor alcohol, stupid will come. You know. Yeah. But. <laughs> I mean, they're like everybody, you ask me, you know, if you think I look bad, you should see the other guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you don't mind me asking, so what what, um, what did you do to end up in, in prison the first term? I threw a, a Molotov cocktail through a, a somebody's window as a scare tactic that went totally wrong. My ex-wife, who uh, I took a money order and spent it on something else and I put the phone and then she found out about it. She was with me when I threw through the, through the, through the window that, and uh, that next morning she says, where's the money? Or I said, I don't know, I, 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 I was lying. I was in my, I was an addict. And uh, this is out in Houston, in Stanislaus County. And she said, Cammy, go across the street and uh, call the police. And I said, oh. And I had a skinhead then, you know. I wasn't one, one of them. I was never one of those people. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I'm just, that wasn't me. Their beliefs are totally different, uh, but and the police came and they arrested me and they charged me with a, a hate crime and a, a, a attempted murder and you know possession of an arson device and I said whoa I said but I, I didn't do it because you know I was trying to kill him I did it was scared I didn't want to hear it you know so they gave me five years and uh, first I, but I you know I wanted to see if I can hang in prison you know because everyone's you know I want to see if I can hang you know not for five years I, I was hoping to see sixteen you know. 16 months, but they, they sh- shut me out down there for five years, Ironwood, and then uh, Solano, and then I paroled, you know, but then I got about 730, I ran a number out, and that was it, one prison term, about seven seven parole bottles for dirty bottles, drugs, horrible. Yeah, so you went back seven times? Yeah, about, about that, yeah. yeah. And I fought, and I, again, I, I really didn't have an education, that, you know, like for, for work, so I, I, all these older, white guys that I looked up to, <laughs> you know, for guidance, they, they said, oh, get on SSI, get on methadone, get, you know, and I, I, I just, blew, I, I, 10 years blew by, and SSI was a curse. I, I was 30 years old, I was, it was huge. I, I mean, I, I, I could have done anything, but I just, sure. I just figured to get the, get the easy money, yeah. So for people who are watching this on the YouTube or listening to our, our podcast, um, I was always told, like, when you do a prison term, and then you get out. Um, being violated is is so easy, and that and that it's always it's it's almost kind of like a it's almost how do I say it? it's it's almost kind of a trick. You, you think you're going to get out and everything's going to be fine, but you get violated really easy because you're not really healed from your issues, right? So being violated is pretty simple. So y- yes, and they can violate you for anything. They, they, one time I, I I pulled my Mark Seven in there. It's my parole officer in Hayward on Breakwater, and. Uh, they, I had a, a, a paring knife that was this big and broke off for the stereo, not for a stabbing device, but they searched my car because they arrested me for something else. 
there in a, per, a, a dirty bottle, and they, they say, oh, we found this, there's another 90 days. And, it's just, and they can do anything they want. And it's like, I'm just telling you, I mean, it's not, I, look at my record, I, I don't, I, guns, knives, that's not me, you know? Right. But uh, they can, yeah, they can, they can violate you. Especially if you've got a 5B clause, you know, alcohol, it's on every corner. That's a drug too, you know? Sure, sure. It's horrible. So, um, so let's go, so we'll kind of go a little bit, yeah. you know, like down the road. So yeah. what, what ended up, so East Bay, uh, get paroled, Solano County, then you back to East Bay. Back to East Bay, and then how did you get over to here to Redwood City? Uh, well, from '98, '99, 2000, I kept going back and forth to prison, and I, and I left my wife of uh, ten years to be with another woman because she, she, she just wasn't she wasn't there emotionally for me. She, she, I'm not that I'm bad, and she was 14 years older than me. Don't get me wrong, she, she was, she, I loved her, but it just, you know, we just. I, I wanted to be with her, but she just never making, making it, making it, make it to me, you know. And uh, then infidelity set in. But uh, uh, after that, I got with her, and I got violated again for something else I had nothing to do with. I gave me eight months. I did, I did that in San, San Quentin. No, actually, uh, Susanville, fire camp, <laughs> arsonist in a fire camp, imagine that. But uh, it was, it was my. I knew that was gonna be it, and I was in love. I was. I, I would, I'd say, okay, this was going to be it. I, I, cause I had been t t done time at Los Cerros Boys Ranch, Juvenile Hall, got up the day before my 18th birthday, and I said, I'm going to do it. This. And, and, and I, I just, you go back into the same environment, same people, same problems, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, so would you say, um, you, you kind of just answered a question I was going to ask, but what, what, so that, what do you feel like, what, what, what's, what keeps you going like that? that? You think it's just that every time you parole and get out, you just end up in the same, Places and then it just you just pick up I the just, same lifestyle and this keeps. But like like we were talking earlier, that everyone says that you should do something you know for yourself and that's what I what that's what I've, I've been selfish my whole life you know and that's what I would do I'd say okay well I'm just gonna do one 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 of these or you know do some of this or get drunk and three days later I I, I see my old girlfriend you know just branching out here and he now that's his boyfriend he's 17 I crack him and and I. You know, and they, they arrest me, you know, they gave me 90 days, and I wasn't even out three days. Right, right. And my poor mom, she's, she's a little old Portuguese woman, my adopted mom, and she, she oh man, I, I used to put a due strain on that woman, you know, I mean. Oh, Is she still alive? No, she died of, in 1990 of uh, emphysema. Okay. Smoking, she smoked for like 50 years. Okay. So you, so, okay, so your dad passed away when you were 16. 1982, October then, 12th. Yeah, and then your mom passed away yeah. in the 90s. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what about your uh, brothers and sister? Uh, I have a brother, Lamar, who's older than me. He's uh, born uh, June 17th, 1965. I haven't seen him in 10 years. Um, mm. My sister, uh, we've had, we've always been like that. She started being, you know, the big, you know, the big cheese and the, when I was coming up, we had had fights, and I put my hands on her, which I shouldn't have never done, you know. And uh, she was she was a good sister, though. I mean, she just she's just different people. We're just different. That's why I'm. I, I, you ever talk to her? I talk to her. I talk to her every so often. Yeah, but uh, she's got her own problems, you know. She, when Ed passed away, she she was gonna have me come out there, but at the last minute, she said no, no, no. And uh, where does she live? She lives out in. Uh, Riverbank over the Modesto area. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so I, we, me, me, me and my, my girlfriend at the time went out there, Janine, and I, back in, I got my jaw broke bad. And uh, she uh, she was just into her, she, she wasn't, she she brought, invited us out there, and we got out there, and she was just like, well, you know, can't you guys come back? And it's like, well, well you know, and we got all this stuff. We were homeless. We slept on the corner with Jason and, and Robert and all them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. You, you've had you've had a pretty you've pretty had a full pack life. Um, so <laughs> so what holds you back from being able to have a conversation with your brother? Um, that I tried to get a hold of him. I, I tried uh, last time I talked to him. He, he, he I gave him fifty bucks and uh, and then they called back a few days later and wanted more money. And I was staying at the shelter. I said, Hey, why don't you just come? In? They got a bed for you. Come 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 on. And he never. I, I haven't heard from. No one's heard from him. Is he used? Yeah, he sort of doing this, you know, and uh, oh. uh, that's what I hear, I don't know, I hope not. Where is he living? Someone said he, that uh, he was MIA for like a while, my sister said, last time I talked to her, that Lamar has been, his, his, attached, his, his attached wages because of child support, uh, somewhere at Stockton in the area, 
somewhere out there. I guess that would be a, I forget, I don't know what county that is, but yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it, I, I, I wish him the best, man. He's my brother, man. Every once in a while I get, you know, cause that's one thing about sobriety is uh, all these feelings come up, you know, and it's like, it's like they're all, oh, yeah. and, you know, that's why I, ooh, it's like I cry at the drop of a hat, you know. And so we go, so we go um, a little bit further forward and you're, you and I, we, we get to meet each other in Redwood City. I've known you for a couple of years. In, in, and I've known you in your addiction. Yes. And now, now knowing you, um, doing the best you can to, to remain sober and uh, and to live your life right. And uh, uh, so, so tell me a little bit about that journey. So, like, how long how long have, were, have you been homeless? Just even in East Bay, in and out of jail, and then uh, Redwood City. How, how many? I was years always at a shelter over there. Uh, but when I got here, I did the P ninety thing mm -hmm. and get graduated. I, I began a gift, but I didn't take the tools. I just was there to get a dope case dropped. and I, So I went to Maple Street, and I, and I started, all I wanted to do was, you know, because I thought I was that guy, you know, see all these women, see all these women, see all these women, and I, which was wrong, you know, and uh, people were there, were, you know, like saying, you, should, if you, you know, you should don't, sh don't shop at the shelter. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah. meaning, meaning, you know, yeah. people are you know, down on their luck, you know. And, well, but they were they were bent over backwards for me. They, I mean, not that they were enabling me, but they give me something. I take it all. You know what I'm saying? I I had ten pairs of shoes. You know, twenty pairs of pants. I didn't need all that. You know, and the, but then all these bad things that I start start to remember because I got on methadone and it, it was just it was just at that point in time I wasn't ready to quit. So I, that was when I got kicked out and I I went I tried to take my life. Uh, and they shot me to choke, third floor. And uh, after that, they kicked me. After 12 hours, I woke up and I got in a fist fight and they kicked me out again. You know, after 12 hours, I was supposed to be there for 72. And, they, and I go back to uh, Maple Street and all my stuff bagged up. I had a lot of stuff and I just took one bag. They gave me $400 cash because I had that much. I said, you guys are gonna give me an attic, $400 cash. Renee, she tried to talk to me into going to Maple Street or Spring Street and I said, no, oh, no, I'm not. I wanna go get high, you know. Because I tried to kill myself, you know. But uh, f what's, th th this, I, that's not where my head's at right now. And sure. I know, and I know that that's, if you do that, I, I mean, from, from the way I was brought up, that's not a good thing. God does not like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of damage to my body, but that's, and I've, I've seen biblical things. Well, the, back, again, back to the, um, so I was homeless off and on uh, 2013, 2014, all, all the way through. Uh, I got I got a voucher and I'm like no, George and Peterson helped me out with a uh, see this hard thing. There's a lot, a lot of trials and tribulations. She helped me out with something, but I I I misused the privileges again, drinking and drugging, and having Janine over there when I shouldn't have. Uh, and she they they evicted me and uh, and I just started hanging around people that were. And I'll be push. I was a pushy pusher, you know. I'd, come on, come on, come on, man! I got the money. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's been you, ten minutes late, you know. Like I, like I have, like I, like I'm that guy, you know. I mean, uh, people just get mad at me. <laughs> people that we've talked about who did this interview before, names will be, you know, left out. But uh, they used to, they used to get mad, and uh, people didn't want me around because I, because I was, a, I, was a, I was an asshole, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I and I would be pushy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't discriminate, I, I hate to say this. I put my hands on everybody, you know. And yeah, uh, it sounds like you're a fighter. Yeah, but I also I don't discriminate against my girlfriend's my girlfriend's father when I was a kid. You know, I beat up him. This yeah. a lot of anger, a lot of a lot of. Where do you think that rage comes from? Scared, being fear, fear. You know, not knowing. Cause I feel I people try to not corner me, but. I think people have an unfair advantage on me, whether it's through the, you know being brought up through the bloodline, you know, because I don't know where my parent, where my parents was I a product of rape or was that product of incest or, you know, and maybe it, someone said this to me one time, uh, a, a psych psychologist over there at Brewster, which I don't see him anymore, no and I said that uh, if I was a dog, they would have put me to sleep young, long ago, and I said, oh, really, <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, I can't yeah, believe yeah, he would yeah, say yeah, that to you, but. Uh, yeah, he said that. And well, it, that's kind of a harsh thing. Yeah, to say. well, I mean, because I was violent towards him, you know, and everybody else there, you know, at, for, at, for a minute, you know, because uh, they wanted to give me my medication. I said, you can't just cut me off. 
whether I'm over, whether the doctor from Hayward was over prescribing me, you just can't cut me off, you know? Yeah. And they said, oh, oh, oh Mr. Hawkins, we, we, sorry, we're, we can't. <laughs> we're going to cut you a cold turkey. I said, oh, you, can't, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. and I'll die. You know, this Klonopin, Klonopin, uh, Xanax, I had Flexero, I had a bunch of scripts. It was wrong, but she, the, she was cool. The doctor and Hayward, you know, that was just going there and talk sports with her. She was. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, 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 the only thing I never really got into was cocaine, you know, which... Yeah. So is that your drug of choice? No, methamphetamine and Meth heroin and alcohol. Is all, alcohol is my first love before women, you know, before women. Yeah. You know. So did you slam? Yes, I did. Yeah. I mean, all, all over, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I mean, so I, what, what, if you don't mind me asking, so when was the last time you got high? Last time I fixed... Uh, Last time I fixed would be over after Fat Boy died about a year ago. A year ago. Yeah, but then I sat there, blood naked in my room with a cross, so similar like that, in a, at at twenty seven oh nine Whipple, and a blood everywhere. I couldn't eight hours just blood everywhere, and uh, it wasn't happening. And I and I got on my hands and knees, and I got literally got on my hands and knees, and I I was crying. I said, please, put somebody in my life. You know this. Why? Why can't I be loved? Why, you know, I just I just broke down, and uh, and eventually that's what I think that one person we talked about. I put my a couple people, but her. Um, it's just weird. Um, I just I just couldn't stop. I mean, if I get paid on the first, I'd be broke on the third, and I big 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 bar on steel till the next month. You know, and it was it was just. Not right, Mr. Ed. He tried to give Ed Reynolds, who was a, was a pillar in his community. He helped. He tried to give me, you know, you know, tools. Literally, you know, go here, go there, go there. You know, give me education. Try to school me. Try to show me how to do things. And I, just, you know, I just didn't want to do it. You know. Yeah. Then he fell into deep into his alcoholism, and then, you yeah. know, he's, and I just and again, I, I always been a taker. You know, if you give me an inch, I'll take a mile. You know, and. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of good people in this community that people don't realize, like Ed Wanahom, that you're talking about, and other people that I know. Yes. Um, Larry Purcell. Yes, who I but, judge irrationally. Uh, you know, yeah, but he, they're good people. He, yes, yeah, actually, good people. very These good. These are man. people that are pillars in the community, yes. and they do a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't know what yes. they're doing, but they're helping the homeless. They're helping a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so you and I ran back into each other uh, about a year ago. Um, I, it was really interesting. So I was. I was um, at Street Church. It was one of the Sunday morning breakfasts, and I saw you from the corner of my eye, just picking up trash. Yeah. And I'm like, "Who's this dude? What, he's tweaking." And yeah. and then I saw your face. And I go, "Oh, it's David." And I know I know you, and you're one of those kind of guys. Like that's just your thing. You you go around picking up trash all over the place. Yes. And um, and so then you came into the gate, and um, that was the first time I actually seen you actually come to the ministry where you were sitting there listening to the message yeah. and actually paying attention. Absorbing it. Yeah. So you, have you always had a relationship with God? Yes, I have. I went to Catholic school for eight years. Went okay. first, second, third, all the way to eighth. And then after that, it just, right. you know, went decades without me even thinking about Lord, the Lord. I mean, uh, I violated just by every one of his commandments. I mean, if you think about it, in his eyes, you did it, you know? Yeah. I mean, so I, yeah, I was guilty of it. So. Yeah. Have you recommended yourself to Christ? Yes, I, I I have got that happened at We Hope with a, a pastor Bar, Baines at Barnes. Yeah, pa Paul Baines. Yeah, all that, uh, and then the the, the the brother with the long braids. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, big 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 African American brother. Uh, oh, I forget his name. But he was he was he's a good man too. Uh, he, it, it felt like they were trying to do an exorcism, man, because they were doing doing all this stuff, and it was weird. But I was, I, was, I started at Fair Oaks reading the AA book. You know the the big book, and then a, a security guard there gave me a, a brand new in in leather, un, untouched, uh, uh, called the message. It was broken down so people like me can understand the word. You know, and uh, it's the Old Testament. They got a little bit of the New Testament, and I read that this by every every morning. But I read that this, this is cover to cover. So the third, this will be the third time, and uh, she gave it to me, and, and that's when my journey began. I said. That's when I started doing the trash thing. Every, you know, and 
people just started coming to see me. And I, then I started volunteering at, at Costco. I did that for four or five months. And uh, they kept running me off. You got to get insurance purchase, you got to get out of here. And I said, why don't you hire me? They said, okay, well, then I've been a employee for Costco. Uh, but I ran into some trouble yesterday or a couple days ago. That's another story we'll talk about later. But because uh, um, I get complacent, you know, and then I start thinking I, I can do, you know, and I, 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 I only got up and on, <laughs> not that I'm, I can count on how many times I've, I've, I've relapsed, but the fact of the matter is I, I pick myself up now and dust myself off and, and, and I, I got a lot of money saved. I just bought, purchased something for somebody. I hope, 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 hope I'm not, a, hope I'm not uh, wasting. But I pay, I pay my bills now. I pay, I pay restitution. I, I, I eat good. Uh, I, I, I got work clothes. I got money in my bank. I got, you, you bought me a phone. I mean, yeah. I mean uh, it's just, uh, I mean. You have your own apartment now? Yes, I have my own apartment. I, yeah. I have you, a might, you might have, a, we were just talking about it earlier, you might have a, a, a female in your life. Maybe. I'm, ho I'm hoping so. Yeah, I mean, you're it, working on it, right? Yeah, but I. See, this you're is, you're kind of like uh, from what it sounds like to me, uh, what we were talking about earlier. You're kind of in the in the in the wooing stage, right? You're trying yeah. to you're trying to get her attention a little yes, bit, right? Yeah, her, 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 she has a she has a child. Yes, yeah, she has a child, and I see them. It's weird, David. Uh, I see the father every once in a while. I see the, the brother. I see family members, and they're they're like I call them sharks. They're friends, you know. They're trying to test me, you know, to see if they started at We Hope, you know, because that's when I first. Through the gauntlet down, I say, hey, you know, what's up? And uh, I said, look, man, I, I'm trying to get my shit together. You know, what's up with you? You know, and uh, but she, she wasn't. It would be no one-on-one -on -one conversation like this. I don't know why. It's just that's what that's why I get hurt sometimes. That's why I say, well, I'll show her, and I and I go get a beer or I do a, a bravo, and I shouldn't do that. That's yeah. again, that has nothing to do with her. That's my insecurities as a man. Sure. But when's the last time you relapsed? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Meth or alcohol? Uh, this, Methamphetamine. Yeah. And at first, I got drunk because I was mad because I I walked off Costco, and, which I shouldn't have because my, cause my ankle. I heard it at work, and they won't let me push carts now. So I got to sit there in full clothes. And I I don't want to be inside. I want to be outside. I like pushing the carts. Man, people. I, I, it, to me, it seems like people come to watch me at times because I because I'm pretty good. I can spin them, and you know, I'm safety first, of course, you know. Yeah. But because. But I just I just like doing it, and it's got I lost a lot of weight, dude. I'm, I can do heck of push-ups now. I can do heck of sit-ups. <laughs> I have a long ways to go, though. You That's know all what right. I mean? It's, but uh, it just I was always <laughs> I was not a believer of hard work g give you result. You know, gives you results. You know, uh, quick money, quick this, quick this. Oh, I get caught. Oh, I, I'm still way ahead. You know. But no, I mean, you work hard, you live hard, you love hard. You know. I mean. So I have a question asking. So in the beginning of July. Street Life Ministries is going to launch a outpatient recovery program. It's going to be faith-based. It's going to be 12 steps with uh, the biblical meanings behind it. Yes. Would you like to be a part of that? Yes, I would. I'm, right. I'm putting my yes. I just I was in. just listening to you struggling, David, with your relapsing. I have no one to talk to, David. I no one to talk to. I have no one to talk to. Every day. So so you're my you're going to be my first client. Okay. That's going to come through. I don't like to say the word client, but that's usually what the terminology that's, that's, is. But, I understand it. But um, yeah, I'd love to love to get, have you come through our program and graduate and never relapse again. Yeah. And maybe maybe through that, maybe we could work on that relationship with yeah. that girl. Because you know, I, I always tell people, and I'll be honest with you, you know, and just here's my, my, my pastorly advice, um, to not get into a relationship with anybody until you, you have over a year clean. That's what... They say that's I know. Yeah. See, that's why because you got to manage your life before you can yeah. help manage somebody else's, right? Because that's what a relationship is. Is you, you know, you get into a relationship, and then what ends up happening is, is you because the the way the Bible is, is the the man becomes a, a leader. Yeah. And she is, and she has a son, right? Yes. So she's going to look to you to help lead. I mean, absolutely. And if you're relapsing, it's going to be hard for you to yeah. lead. So, yeah. so we got to work on you, right? Absolutely. That'd be I, awesome. Mold me, but I mean, yeah. I, 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 I submit. I, that's why I know she's there. I know she's there. She's from afar. You know, I mean, uh, I know what I feel, and yeah. uh, <laughs> I got this big heart. That's she left. She, it's the best gift I've ever received in my life. You know. Yeah. So you like your little job at Costco? I love it. I love yeah. what I do. I love pushing the carts. I love. I love the people there. They didn't leave me alone. I mean, I go in there, check it, and it's, now I, I have to ask you an honest question. Yeah. Now, are you able to do your job and not pick up trash in the parking lot all day? 
Th that's yes, I can. I can't pick up trash. Can you yes. do the ball? Yes, yeah, because right. you carry it back. I know that's a thing you like to do. Yeah, I, I get there early and I make sure I check. I, I have a routine, you know. And so I, if anybody, if anybody here that's listening to this podcast visits the Redwood City Costco, um, is it okay for them to say hi to you? I say hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Yeah, hey, All right. Dave. Say thank you for keeping the parking people, lot clean. Yeah, people, because I help, you know, if I drop what I'm doing, and it's, it's like elderly people or people that can't lift the heavy stuff, I say, oh, excuse me, would you like a hand? And some, nine times out of ten, I say, yeah. And sometimes they try to give me money, and it's like, no, I'm, I'm great. Yeah. You have a great day. And I start, go, you know, just drop the cards, you know. Yeah. yeah. So do you know Darren? Yes, I know he Darren. He works at Grosch Outlet? Yes. He so he, he did our podcast, and um, when, it went, when it went on the YouTube, now he has people from that come in and shop that have seen him on our YouTube, so they'll come in and approach him. So, yeah. so just know some people might approach you. That's fine. Is that's, that okay? That's okay. I, I have no problem with that. All right. Yeah, I'm not, like again, I'm not doing this. Uh, this is to get my soul back from the Lord. That's what it's all this. My my salvation. Uh, uh, you know what I like about you? Uh, uh, that's that's really attractive about you. What's that? Is that that you you struggle, right? You've had you've had a obviously a pretty crazy life but you're very positive you know would you where we where do you where do you think that positive comes from having god yeah because before i was very self-loathing fuck 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 yeah. hate myself you know and I'll, you know I'll, this that's it's not wanting not loving liking myself let alone love myself i mean now it's like yes i like who david is i mean obviously other people do too Sure, but I just, it's just, I just, it's just little, not, oh, not, uh, it, what's that word I'm looking for? Where you get entrenched with things, not overpowering, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to take in at one, at, all at once, you know, because I gave up all the, 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 the adult movies, uh, the, the, the uh, sports, um, the rock and roll. I mean, I still listen to my rock and roll, but I mean, God. Family, you know, country, you know, the Redwood City. I, I love Redwood City. It's got a lot of history here. That's why I don't mind doing what I, because I came here, I, 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 I disrespected a lot of businesses and a lot of people. That's why I, that's why I do what I do because it, it's my way of giving back. Monetarily, I mean, if I win the lottery, they can have it all. I mean, that's, I'm not doing it for money. I'm just trying to get, trying to get right with God. And God will just, you know, you know, God, I, 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 I do have a personal relationship with God, and I ask Him sometimes, and I, and I don't get the answers or, or, or a, any answers, you know. And it's just weird, but I've seen stuff that I cannot explain, man. Um, but He's listening. Yeah. Oh, He's He's definitely listening. He hears all of our prayers. Yes, yes, He does. I, I believe that. It just doesn't have to be on our time sometimes. Yeah. And it's, not, <laughs> it's not. Oh, come on, man. That's, that's <laughs> the one. That's the one thing I've learned that's the most frustrating about about our Savior, is that He hears every prayer. Yes. Whether he answers it as quickly as we want him to answer it, it, it that's that's a whole other subject. But you know, um, yeah, I get I mean, it. I mean, I, like I said, I, I went Catholic school, but I never really got into the Bible. But just how 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 he made man and decided to wipe him out, you know, with the Moses thing, and uh, this the, from from what I understand, uh, uh, Jesus Christ is going to be coming soon, and he's going to be angry too, you know, at all of this, you know, all this Babylon. That's what I call the place up there on Babylon because that room was just. Yeah. It's all yeah. bad, you know. I tried, I get one day, two day, and oh, well. It's... Well, you know what's good about the uh, recovery program that we're going to start is that the whole time you're there, by the, by the time you graduate, you will have gone through the whole Bible. That's great. So, That's what I want. so it'll be explained to you, you'll learn it, you'll study it, and you'll have, you'll, you'll memorize it. it. Yes. You'll be memorizing it. So, um, you'll have a really deep understanding of why God does the things that He does and why. The Bible was written the way it was written. So when you graduate, you'll have a full understanding of, of, of you, and and what why you are the way you are, and also how wonderful you are and how God created you in His image. You do know that, right? Yes, I do know that. Uh, you know. Before I would just, I would not cuss at him, but I'd just say, you know, why me? Why me, Lord? You know, I mean. Uh, how come everyone? How come I can't be loved? You know, what about my mom? What about you know, my birth mom and. That'll come too. I I, I want to. I have the money now. I should get one of them twenty three me's. You know what is what it's sure. called. But you know, it's not really the price. I have a birth certificate I filed for in two thousand four, and it says David Hawk David Dean Hawkins does not exist. That's, what? Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing. Because I had the original birth certificate, and I got all tweaky, and I burned it all up. Nah. 
but it, I did never have my birth parents' name. I'm just, I just like to know if I got relatives, you know, mom, you know, brothers, sisters. So, I, I, really quick, I didn't, I didn't catch that last part. Have you done Twenty Three Me? No, I have not. Okay, so I did Ancestry. Yes, and that's how I found. That's how. You, yeah, my my birth mother is doing life in prison for without the possibility of parole. She she oh, murdered somebody. Yeah, so. Um, but we're in contact with each other, and she's she saved. She's, she's a Christian. She, knows the Lord now. she actually her 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 uh, job at, at in prison is working in the church, and so she works for the pastor, and um, yeah, she's she's an amazing everyone, woman. Everyone can be saved. Completely saved. So do you Completely have brothers re- and sisters? Do you know? I have uh, yeah, I have half brothers and half and half I have half brothers, not half sisters, but um, yeah, they're 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 messed up. I've I've talked to a couple of them, and they're. They're really in a bad place. But the interesting thing is, and I will tell you, and I, w- I want to work with you on this. I want to get you, I'm going to get you Ancestry.com. I'll pay for it. And I'll have okay, you do it. And fine. then we'll, you, it's an easy, you do a little swab and, and it's easy and I'll get you all set up. And um, I have somebody that I know that can actually set up the profile for you. Oh, cool. And then we'll start matching you up. Um, yeah, it was really interesting for me. I will be uh, completely honest that when I started to get, uh, because uh, they found me through Ancestry, and then I ended up getting contacted through Facebook, um, and because they saw my profile. Okay. And the my one of my, I guess she'd be my cousin, like third generation cousin or whatever, started sending me pictures of men on my side. We look exactly alike. It was, it, was features, time, right? it was the first time in my entire life I ever seen anybody that I was related to that looked just like me. <laughs> and it made it, I cried for days. That's, I cried out of excitement. That would be the, that'd be wonderful. So let's let's work on that together. Yes, I'll be, get you ancestry dot com. Yeah, that'd be great. And we'll we'll get that going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I would appreciate that. You know, yeah, because I, I got I mean everyone has somebody. I mean, it takes a while. It took me eighteen months before I got my first contact. But because you know what it does is it, first it starts connecting you to sixth and eighth generation. Which is a, a lot of generations. That's, that's way back. That's huh? way back. But then it slowly starts catching up. And I'll tell you what, between Ancestry.com and Facebook, because it, er, most everybody is on Facebook, the way it connects, is it's unbelievable. And I, I, I'm i very grateful for that now. So, um, And it's actually having a, a, having a com- relationship with, with the woman who gave birth to me is pretty cool. Now... I still my my mom is my mom. Yeah, this is the woman who I'm in contact with. Yeah. She's a lady who gave birth to me. Yeah, she's a but She's not my mom. Yeah, I know that. You know, so and I don't ever, I don't ever. She's the one that gets. Yeah, twi- I don't get that twisted. I, I, she's the one that had birth. Yeah, and your, your mom that you know as mom was the one that nurtured you and raised you and supported you and loved you and yeah. built the, you. The interesting thing is, and you, which might be interesting for you, I was born in 1970, and uh, so I was the last year before abortion was. Um, legal. Yeah. So, uh, but I was born addicted. She was using crank. Oh, wow. And heroin and everything else. So I was born addicted. So when I got older and I fell into drugs, my body naturally took sucked onto the, it up, sucked yeah. it up. And now I know why. So all these years I couldn't figure out why I, why I ran into addiction. But then I, now I know why my body naturally just was, it was waiting for it. It was almost kind of like as soon as I picked up that first drug, my body went, yes. This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been waiting for. And then I was off and running for 20-something years. Yeah. I could not call time out. I could not call time out. (laughs) Yeah, I couldn't stop. Well, I'm like you. I I just, I'm all or nothing, right? Yeah. That's that's how it is. And and I'm clean and sober for 15 years now, and I'm still all or nothing. That's great, man. That's what I want, man. Because, I mean, then then you'd be on. See, with, with that comes confidence and sureness and, you know, no one's ever showed me, not that my father wasn't a man, but he never had the chance to show me or I didn't. No one sat down and said, Dave, this is how you're supposed to treat women. Not that I didn't know, but this is how you're supposed to be, pay bills, get a job. You know, I just said, oh, man, tomorrow, tomorrow, you know. I want to be Motley Crue, you know, I want to be a rock and roll star, you know, but I never can play an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. <laughs> how old are you now? Um, I'll be 55 this year. 55, and guess what? It's never too late. No, it's not. You're so you're you're working on it now. I know you're relapsing, but you're not actively continuing to use. No, absolutely. And not. you got a little job. Yes, I got a great you have an job. Apartment. Five hours. Five hours. About twenty five hours a week. We'll get through this together. Yeah. We're, I, 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 that's my my promise to you is that we're going to get through this together, okay. right, bro. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate. That. That's yeah, what I was just talking about last. You know, I need someone to help me, man. I mean, I'm really really glad that you came here today. Yeah, me too. So your testimony, you sharing this on on the podcast. Now I got to know you a lot better than I've known you before. And uh, seeing the similarities 
and in both of our lives um, is really cool. See, back not too long ago, I wanted uh, I could I like to work everybody for whatever I can get out of them. Now it's like I want to earn everything, like the job, the the the, the female. That's what I, it's it's like a chore. I mean, I, I understand that she had like the court, and I mean, it, it, and I never been, I'm used to women just going give me things that they, they should have been hold on to, you know. Uh, but it's, she's <laughs> does she, she use? She, she's an ex, you know, she's an ex-addict, I believe. I believe she is, but I don't think she's, no, I don't think she uses it at all now, right now. I think she, she's one of the most, she is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Every, oh, that's awesome. I mean, I, I have no problem true. saying that, yeah. that, you know, I, I stand by that, that's, that's a bold statement, that, you know. That's she was, awesome. She, yeah, and I, I'll tell her that to her face, you know. Hey. I know how you feel, man. I'm, when I met my wife's uh, nine years, I've known her for nine years, we've been married for six. Um, I, when we got married, and I, to this to this day, I tell myself like there's, there's no way, I I can physically pull this off. Yeah, it's all God. I married up. I I totally married up. My wife's gorgeous, and uh, there's no way I would ever be able to pull that on my own. So. <laughs> no, <neither would> I. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She's this one's like 38 years old to be 39 in, in a couple months, and I, I just, she's just oh man, she's just beautiful. I mean, everything about her. She's Hispanic, which. I mean, she, Latinas are this beautiful women. I mean, all women are beautiful. And I appreciate every woman now. I know that they were God's gift, not just to man, but to the world. Yeah. You know, and I just had so many good ones. I just pushed them away because I wanted something else, you know, not their friend or their mom, you know, or their drugs, you know, or. Sure. I prompt the world to have a night, a passion with them, and I'd say, okay, bye. Yeah. But I want to be loved. I want it to be loved this time in God's laws. Yeah. I, I, I just want to cuddle with her when I sit down. You know, not even have, it's not even about the intimacy. It's just I just want to get to know this person. That's why I get mad, Dave. But it's it's on God's time. I know. I I, I it's on Dave's time. Remember I that. Know, it's know. hard. Sometimes God has to tell you to slow your roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has. He, he 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 he's a few times put his hand down like with a jaw thing. Yeah. And then uh, my teeth. It's just he's he let me know who's who's running the show. You know. I think, but uh, he has a, he has a plan, and whatever it may be, whether it's doing something like you do, or or working at Costco pushing pushing carts, or you know, hey, maybe Coach Gruden needs uh, uh, somebody to uh, run them towels <laughs> up in Vegas. You know, I love the you know I still love the Raiders, but they're like number five or six now. And God, damn. are you a Raiders fan? Die hard, die hard. Oh really? man, that caused oh. a lot of problems. So, uh, so now I know what to pray for you, poor thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. They got the best <laughs> stadium in the league. They do have the best stadium in the league. <laughs> Yeah, they they moved in the city of sin, but yeah, they got yeah, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Babylon part two. <laughs> you know, it's like they moved the twice they moved from Oakland. You know, and it's like I know, I know, I know. It, that's it's horrible. It's, yeah. But I, I don't care if they go to the moon as long as they win. Yeah. I'll never, I'll never forget when Al Davis moved him down to L.A. Yeah. Man, there were so many angry people. Oh yes. yeah, I remember that. Because it was like, oh, by that. the way, you know, we just won a Super Bowl two years ago, and. Uh, because I went to the last Raider game I ever played there. It was, it was, they were finished seven and nine the year after they won the Super Bowl and they shocked the world, Super Bowl 15. And uh, as the year the Niners won uh, beat Cincinnati, I, I'm a ready man when it comes to sports. I left, I, that's how I escaped when I was in prison. Uh, got into sports, I can play some basketball too. Cool. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they, they, uh, Al Davis moved him and, he, and uh, I went to the last Raider game against the Chicago Bears and nobody knew what was going on because they were still fighting. But Al Davis has gotten unjustly um, mucked, you know, from the NFL for, you know, certain things, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's his alley. You know? I mean, the cloud follows him around, did follow him around, now his son, you know. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 the silver and black, baby. Not silver and gray, silver and black, you know, silver. <laughs> it's beautiful. They got the, the uh, uniform. That's the thing, I had a bunch of jerseys, I threw them all away because I said, that's part of, that's not who I want to be now. I'm, not, yeah. I'm 54 years old, man. What am I wearing? It's Derek Carr's jersey, you know. I love Derek. You know, he's part of the team. And all the, he's the best Raider quarterback they got right now. But God got to come first. That's why I put everything aside, you know. Yeah. It's, I mean, I couldn't believe. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there reading the Bible in, in, in Fair Oaks community. I mean, then we hope sitting there with little pieces of plastic in the, in the sickles out there and, and when the person that I talk about, I'd be sitting there talking to her on the phone, you know. She's keeping me coming out there where I'm sweating, it's starving me, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to fast. I, I, like I said, I've lost a lot of weight, you know. And, and right next, right below God, she helped me get through this. That's why I, I, there's more, I, 
I know that I, I know. Is this the girl, the girl that lives across the hall you're talking about? Yeah, she, well, she's, she's not there anymore, but she's somewhere else. I see her all the time. Okay. Yeah, but different versions. We heard Nan, but uh, all right. Yeah, but it, it, it's it's all good. No, I mean, I mean, again, there's other women that try to, you know, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I don't even have no conversation for him. You know? Yeah. I'm not trying to. I just want. I just want. I used to want all, but I just want the one now. Yeah. The most beautiful one God has ever made. I mean, I, I'd say that with conviction yeah. too, brother. Yeah. I mean, I, I want. I want to get a big K up right here, but I think that'll wait. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. David, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love man. you, man. I love you too, man. Hey, thanks a lot for coming back to Street Life, and thanks a lot for for sitting with us. You're there every every Monday, Wednesday in the church service, and I try to listen be, to the word. It's right down the street from my house. It's like a Seinfeld episode. You see, every I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, everyone's <laughs> that's hilarious, like a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> Except for we always have soup for you. Yes, <laughs> no soup for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. Like he's, Amen. But thank you for for being honest. Thank you for being open and sharing your story with me, I, and and with and with its audience yeah, well, and people that are going to watch it and stuff. Because I hope and my prayer is, is that um, everybody who listens to this, they get an opportunity to to hear something in your story, and your in your honesty that touched their heart, their heart and their life and change. And maybe maybe my hope is that somebody will hear this that's struggling with their relationship with Jesus and yeah. they'll hear your attitude, and they'll come to Christ in this. Because I was way over here to the left. I mean this. Man, I just, I'm still waiting for that spiritual, that 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 that, that feeling that they that I hear about that, that they talk about that cannot be bought. It's just like God touching, you know, the spiritual awakening. I guess it would be. Yeah. I, I want that so bad. I, I mean, more than anything, you know. And I, but I want to be able to share a sober, happy, loving life with cool. one, uh, you know, my wife. Can I pray for you, David? Yes, you can. All right. Lord, we, uh, we come to you right now, Father God. Thank you so much for my brother David. God, thank you so much for his testimony. Thank you so much for this story uh, that he shared with, uh, with us today. God, just be with him, Lord. Um, watch over him and, and comfort him. God, guide David through all things today. God, and watch over him and, as, his, as he has the tendency to relapse. God, I, I ask you to uh, break that off in the mighty name of Jesus. And we, we say we command the enemy that's uh, around him, that's uh, talking to him about addiction. He must flee in the mighty name of Christ. And uh, Lord, we just pray for uh, for protection over our brother David. And just walk with him. Show him your way, God. Be with him all day. Be with him uh, for, for, for here, from here on out, God. Just walk through his journey. And uh, God, thank you so much for, for the gentlemen who have come around his life, like Pastor Paul Baines and, and the gentleman, he can't remember his name, that uh, uh, had him receive Christ. And uh, Ed Winehall and uh, Larry Purcell in the Catholic Worker House. And, and, uh, and Street Life Ministries and, and for all the folks in between have come around. So we ask uh, for a blessing upon our brother David right now. So be with him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. Thank you, Thank David. You. Thank you, man. I appreciate everything you do.